Hi, Rod Kane here from Washington Grand Company. Uh, today, once again, another video about my favorite ancient medieval game, Triumph. Uh, we're going to use the Battle of Hastings today to demonstrate uh, the Triumph rules, as well as play out the historical Battle of Hastings. Uh, I did a little teaser video already on this, and then today what we're actually going to do is play through the game until the end uh, and see if uh, we can recreate the exact uh, history of the battle. Uh, whether Harold will uh, be victorious or whether Duke William will once again take the, cr the crown of England. So I hope you'll stick with us. I'm going to introduce the generals. We're going to introduce the troop types, uh, lay out a little bit of the details of the battlefield that are game specific, uh, as well as the um, kind of homemade convention or battle card rules that I use for this particular scenario. Um, so stick with us and uh, we're going to play out the Battle of Hastings together. It's not going to work. <laughs> All right, so uh, welcome to our Battle of Hastings. So uh, we have Brian and Larry of our uh, from our previous video fame. Uh, and I, let's see, Larry, you've chosen to be King Harold again, right? Uh, yes. Because you're trying to redeem yourself I'm from the last myself. battle yes. where you played Harold. Yes. Um, we won't mention what happened there. <laughs> Brian is taking uh, William's command, and uh, both Brian and Larry are experienced Triumph players. So um, we're going to go over some rules briefly on the specifics to the scenario. So specific to the scenario, uh, all of King Harold's troops are on top of the hill. And as long as they can keep the Normans from passing this edge where they start, which is marked with some lighter material, they get a plus one hill bonus for their combat. So plus one hill bonus starts here. And anytime you're uphill from the enemy, you have that plus one hill bonus. Um, that is a standard triumph rule. However, one other rule specific to scenario is if King Harold has any troops that are downhill, normally moving this guy backwards up the hill and into position would be one command point. But we have a um, special battle card that I use for this scenario called Look, We're Winning. And the look where winning card says these guys take an extra command pip to bring them back. So the reason that we're doing that will become a little more obvious if you play the game, but it's to generate the effect of the uh, Saxon forces being pulled down the hill when they're victorious in combat. Uh, one other battle card that we're going to use is I'm not dead yet. So for William Stan only, if William Stan was to be destroyed in combat, there's a 50% chance that he's actually not dead. And if he has any other knight stands still alive in his command, he could be in one of those as well. So those are the only two special cards we have for today. Um, and with that, we're ready to start the game. Uh, we'll start out with a um, uh, Norman turn. Uh, so you're going to roll command dice. And in Grand Triumph, uh, as you remember from the Hatton video, maybe, um, you assign a color to each command. So there are three Saxon commands. And there are three Norman commands, and so the command dice are spaced out that way. So what you roll, those command points can only be applied to this command and to the other command. And also, the uh, the back of the stand, which you can't see in the video, have colored dots to help identify which troops are in which command. So with that, Brian, it's your turn. Okay. Okay, so we're getting ready for the first Norman turn. Uh, Brian has assigned his dice, and he's rolled. We have, what, one? That's a good start. Yeah, great. <laughs> uh, so one for Bishop Odo's command. And no, Odo may, not, may or may not have technically been charged this battle, but we use it because he's a colorful character we knew was at the battle. Uh, William's command is the green dice with a four, and Count Eustace of Boulogne with a six. Now, just a quick introduction to the forces. <clears throat> Each one of these commands is fairly similar in nature. Um, we have mounted knights. Javelin Cavalry, which are the lighter horse or the unarmored knights. Uh, we have heavy foot here, dismounted knights or elite foot in the center of the, of the line. Skirmishers, rabble. Count Eustace command is the same, uh, but for William's command, he doesn't have any rabble in the center, but he has one extra stand of knights. So we have three 52-point triumph armies. So... With that, Brian, do you want to go ahead and take your first uh, movement, and then we'll go from there. And we'll move the mounted forces up for one behind them. Okay, so group moving the mounted. So that's all four command points there. Uh, moving on over.
over to the right. The rabble. The skirmishers, so that takes three to move all those. Give me three command points. Move the heavy and elite foot. Leaves me two. I'm just going to move the mounted back in support. Leaving me one. And then I'm going to do a second or a march move. Okay, so we're march moving the rabble, which sure they can do because eight. they're yep. more than eight away from the enemy. Okay, and that's okay. all six command points for them. So Larry's rolling for his commands. All right, so we have three, five, and three. Now, Larry's force a little bit different than the Normans. So we have on uh, this side of the line, uh, house carls to the front. These are the guys with the axes. And then most of the guys with the spear are going to be heavy foot. And then he has two skirmishers in the woods. On this side, it's a mirror image of that. House carls to the front. Guys with spears, which are part of the frid, those are heavy foot. Skirmishers in the woods. In the center command, under Harold's command, house carls. Harold in the center with his flag and then some horde in the rear for reserve. All right, so Larry, do you wanna go ahead and take your turn? I'm done. <laughs> As expected, uh, <laughs> a lot of maneuver on this action side. So, switching back to the Norman side. All right. Six, one, and three. Bishop Odo always dies. We're going to see if we can change that today, right? Because he's supposed to live historically. All right. Uh, so I moved the rabble and the two skirmisher stands for my three there. So yeah. that is it for them. So looking from the Saxon line, we can see the Normans approaching slightly in echelon with Eustace flank leading. Okay. So advancing with the rabble. Uh, commentary on the rabble. The rabble actually don't do too bad against skirmishers in the woods, but they certainly won't stand up to the heavy foot. So, And I'm actually, for my second command point, going to join this skirmisher to them. Okay, and an important note on that, rabble and skirmishers can move as a group, even into the bad terrain. Uh, the hill or the wood line there is marked by the leaves, so wherever you see leaves, that's going to be the start of the rough terrain. And for my one... Command point here, we will move the skirmishers up the hill. And then I have five over here. Gonna move him there. That's two. Move them as a group for three. Move them up for this is the other requirement for playing Battle Hastings the convention. You have to be taller than uh, six feet. We're actually going to have like a little spear, I think, that we bring out. And if you're not tall as, tall as a spear, you can't play the Normans because you can't reach across the table. I'm going to do a second or a march move for my last command point. Okay, so we're double moving or march moving the heavy foot line with the elite foot in the center. And that is it for me. Okay, so let's take another look at the battlefield. As we can see, the Normans are progressing up the hill. Larry, would you like to roll? <laughs> You're just going to wait? You're going to pass? I'll pass. Okay, so Larry's passing his turn, and once again, it's the Normans' turn to move up the hill. All righty. On the right, we rolled a three. In the center, rolled a three. And Bishop Odo. Bishop Odo on the left rolled a one. A one. Mm -hmm. Apparently he does not want to die. Not real battle. eager. Not really eager. He's going. Uh, the rabble and the skirmishers for one command point. They're just just out of range of making contact. Okay, just short of contact. But they can group move into that rough terrain on the edge of the woods because they are rabble and skirmisher. Um, for my second command point, I'm going to move up the heavy foot and the elite foot. And 
and for my third um, third command point is that the general there that is the, the general with the flag yep okay I'm going to move my skirmisher into contact there oh okay so we have an, we have an early contact with the skirmisher all right in the center you're gonna move the heavy foot up I'm waiting for you to pull the jab cab out to play skirmishing yeah saving those Save them for a little later okay there's for two And we'll move him up into contact for three. That's it for there. On this side, we can only do one. I'm going to move the rabble. Okay. That is it for my movement. All right, that's it for the Normans, but we do have combat. So we're going to zoom in on the combat. Um, and since it was the Normans uh, bound or movement, it is... Uh, the Normans' decision where they would like to fight first. So, Brian, where would you like to go well, first? We'll start over here on the right. Okay, so starting on the right. So, the key here is we have a skirmisher, double General. overlapped. So they start at a two, they go to a zero, versus an elite foot general that is uphill. So elite foot would be five, general is six, plus one for uphill is seven. So it's seven to zero. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, I rolled a three. Okay. That was cocked. All right. Doesn't matter. I should have. Doesn't matter anyway. Yeah. All right. So it's a three to an eight total. So, um, so the skirmisher is doubled. So he will pull back one base depth and then he will evade four straight back. So one base depth and evade four. And the fun part about this is because skirmishers can't be killed by elite foot in straight combat, he gets to evade. And I go forward because I doubled them, right? And you go forward because you doubled them. Correct. Okay. All right. It's... And the skirmisher ends up... And a skirmisher is also one of the unique troops that can actually pass through the formed or close order foot. Um, otherwise, he would have stopped in front. And evade doesn't kill him, so he's good. Now we have the same thing over here, except that the guy on the upper hill is a heavy foot, not an elite, and not a general. So it would be a 4 plus 1 to a 5 for the uphill, a 0 for the skirmisher. One. Okay, so we have a 1 for the skirmisher. To a 10. And a 10. So once again, doubled. Skirmisher pulls back one base depth. And then we'll evade a total of 4 straight back, avoiding any enemies. And it pulls that guy to the line. So, um, Brian, you're not close enough to take advantage of that, but the concept is already in play, which is to try and yank the Saxons down the hill following after a glorious victory against the light foot. So, or right. the skirmishers. So, um, Larry, I believe it's your command pips. Would you like to roll this time? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have a five. Oh, jeez. We have a one. And we have a one. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the reason that we have laughter in the ranks is, as you remember... This guy is from Harold's command, which is the white dice. Um, so to put him back, he needs two command pips. Because it's plus one command pip to get him to go back up the hill. Same thing applies here. To put him back, it's two command pips. And that's a scenario rule. Um, this would eventually happen at some point anyway, where he had fewer command pips. It doesn't usually happen when you only needed two. <laughs> but it did. But Larry, Larry is so still accommodating. So this is where the Saxons have their first command decision. So Larry, Larry, yes, <laughs> would you like to go down the hill or leave them hanging? I mean, it's not like Brian's in a position to really take advantage of it, but as you can see, um, you got a little bit of time to put them back together, so you could wait a turn, or you could come forward, because one command pip will bring the entire Saxon command forward. Yep. And the one command pip bringing his brother's command forward as well. I think I'm going to hold right now. Okay. So the Saxons are going to hold with their command pips. They didn't have enough to put them back together. They're going to leave the line like it is. And it's the Norman's turn. Okay. 
three on the right, three in the center, and a four on the left. All right. Do not have enough movement to get up to him. Yeah, so you're you're safe this turn. And rebels move rebel moves three. Yeah. I don't know that I have enough to Yeah, you can you oh, can, I can close yeah. it. Okay, so for one I'm gonna take these two in. That's okay. one command point. The second command point. I'm gonna move that rabble into the woods. Of course the trees are all movable, so anything is in your way. And you could cover him that way, or you can actually pull short. Remember, Ryan. Yep. So as long as his front, as long as his entire front covers uh, the side. Yep. So that's for two command points to be able to do both of those moves. Okay. And then I'm going to bring the heavy and the elite foot up to see if Larry's so generous with another one next turn. <laughs> Right, that's it for the right. Did okay. You want, were the skirmishers? They weren't. They um, weren't touching. They, well, they they were touching, but they're not um, part of the group. They're not corner okay. to corner. So in the middle, um, a three. Uh, we'll go up here for one. All right. So William's going to launch some skirmishers. Here for two. Now the other unit in William's army that has the ability to pull guys out of line into the jav cav or the light the light horse. Um, however, they can be killed by the elite foot. So remember, those guys can actually be killed by the house carls, the more the more experienced mm -hmm. troops, uh, if they're doubled. But the heavy foot, they can run away from all day. Just like the skirmishers. Skirmishers can only be killed by guys that have got missile weapons. And I mean missile weapons that go farther than the hand thrown. Up there for two. Okay. Leave me two command points yet. I see. So Brian, you're using a little bit different strategy on the left flank than you are on the right flank. Massive light troops going at one end of the line. Solid wall of infantry, and Odo, hearing tales of previous Battle of Hastings he's convention like games so. past, is not moving at all. I see. He's a little slow to get uh, to get yeah. started. I try. He didn't die once. There was one game we had where he didn't die, out of the dozen or so times we ran this in convention. But he died almost every other time. We'll so, start over here on the right. Combat on this end. Yep. All right. Where would you like to start, Brian? Uh, start with the rabble here. Okay. So rabble plus two, skirmisher plus two, wrapped on the corner makes it a one. So it's two to one. Now does he have Am I a... back up because I... It's oh, I'm sorry. Hill. You're back up because you're up the hill. That's correct. So two to two. two. So it's two to two. Oh, that's not good. Oh. And they lock. They lock. So we have <laughs> one and a one and we have a lock. All right. So All right. the next one, skirmisher versus skirmisher, um, he's going to be a three and you're going to be a one. Yes. That's definitely a cock to die. He's got a five total over there with a two for his roll. Oh, oh and we have a five total here with a four. <laughs> so, they locked. so they locked. So we have a lock on that end. And okay. you want to just go down the line? Yeah, we're going to go right down the line. All right. The skirmisher versus the heavy foot there. That's actually a house girl. Oh, those, those are elite. So yep, we, have a, we have a five up to a six for the hill, and the skirmisher is a zero. Ten to one. Okay, so, gonna so that's going to be a back off, and House Carl's chase him down the hill. He stays just in front of just in front of the heavies. The heavy line there, and the excited House Carl is charging forward. Look, we're winning. Okay, and this then, one's going to be a two. Uh, you're still downhill from him, so he mm -hmm. would be a four five. So it's a five to a two. No overlap. So I'm a five. Six. And six, so just going to be a, a fall back. Didn't double. Okay. And that is it for there. That's it for the combat. Okay, now, <laughs> now let's see King Harold, what would you like to do? You rolled a three. That's good. A six yeah. in the middle. And another six. So oh, so that command pit, big surprise there. He's going back in line. Somebody woke Larry up. House Carls are back in line. 
Back in line. Is there anything else that you'd like to do? You got one more command pip on this flank, and you got plenty on the other flank. You may have trouble in the woods soon, but yeah. you may not, too. Maybe they'll win. Yeah. Wasn't exactly a rollover, was it? No. <laughs> I'm going to... That's three, right? Would that be... I'd be able to move them. Yeah. I'm just going to move them over to here. And he's going into... This will be rough going here. Yeah, if you're going to move them over a full base width... Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's fine. You ain't got that's plenty okay. of movement yeah. if you're using the Look command pips. Yep. Yeah, so now the front edge of that heavy foot will be in rough terrain. Mm -hmm. So if he fights in this location, he'll have a minus. Okay. If the combat takes place with air. That's fine. I think we're good. Right. You're good. Okay, we have combat, and it's your turn to command the shots on where you start. Nothing so here. starting with the skirmisher on skirmisher. So you've got a, a skirmisher that's a three because he's uphill. A skirmisher that's a one because he's overlapped. So four. Okay. So we got a four for Brian's skirmisher, and that's going to be a fallback. Oh, he was beaten but not doubled. And, of course, the skirmisher can be killed by other skirmishers if he gets doubled because they've got missed weapons, too. Over here we have two, two three. The rabble's going to be a one. Three to one. Uh, you're going to be a. Oh, I'll be a two. You're going to be a, be a well, two to one. You're going to be a two beca only because of the overlap on the end. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two to one. So I'm and a seven. Seven. A lock. Or I'm sorry, I'm a six. Yep. To Larry's six. So, they yep. lock so another there. lock on that end. Okay. That's it. Duke Williams' turn. So, Brian? Two. Six. Six. And six. six. Oh my. All right. Let's see what we got to do here. Odo may actually have to do something. He's not going to be able to sandbag with a six. They can make it into combat. Okay. So one, take him back up the hill. Okay. Yeah, you have to have enough to get to where you're going. So they could line up next to him if you were trying to send that whole line up. Yeah. Because you move up and snap over. So the whole line can go in. You're not going to soften him up first? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know that it's such a good idea to take the whole line in. It only outnumbers you two to one. It's not a big deal. Yeah, two to one and I'm fighting uphill. Well, there's that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that, actually. <laughs> we're going to bring him up to here. Second All right. point, and that'll be it for there. Uh, in the center here, we're gonna go up here for one. Up here for two. Try to get these guys a little closer. Okay. Oops. Try to take advantage if you actually develop that gap. Yeah, if we can pull somebody out, hopefully we can pounce on them. And then... And bringing, bringing the, the javelin cavalry up. And then we'll bring these guys up. Okay. Okay, that's it for that command. All right. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I don't think Odo can sandbag this time. He's got a six. Yeah, he's going to have to do something. Brother's going to tell him to get moving. So we'll move these guys in for one. They can group move. They'll group move. And then they would snap over. And they can group move even though they have some of their movement in the rough terrain because it's all rabble and skirmisher.
Now the heavy foot that was on the end, are you going to drop him behind? Because he can actually fall in behind yeah, the end if, of the line. Yep, if I can do that, that's what I'm going to yep, do. Yep. Keep so him as part of the group. As part of the group, in order to make space, you can drop back for free. Although you had the command pips, you could have used them anyway. You could have put him wherever you wanted. Here comes Odo. So even though I'm on a bit of an angle, I've got enough room there to maneuver away from that before it becomes a problem. Yep. And then... Jab cap a, a little command. bit farther? Yep, second, okay. second command point go up there. All right. All right, so that's it for... We still movement. have combat. Starting on the uh, we'll usual. On here on the far right. Okay. I'm going to attack the skirmisher on the end there. All right, so, so we have a two to a two because the skirmisher's uphill, but he's overlapped. I rolled an eight. Uh-oh. So an eight to a six yep. because you can't retreat. That skirmisher is dead, but you didn't double him, so you don't charge forward. Okay. And now the next skirmisher is going to be a... Uh, two, up one for the hill, down one for the overlap, so he stays a two, and your skirmisher is going to be a one, so it's yep. two to one. Seven to six. Okay, so, so your skirmisher back. will pull back. I'm actually amazed that he's still alive. Yeah, that's a dangerous right. spot. For that me. was a dangerous spot. Okay. We'll go down here with the skirmisher versus the elite foot. So All right. Six. I'm, I'm a zero, a zero. I'm double okay. overlapped. On a five to an eleven, doubled me, so I evade. Yep. So drop back. He's gonna pop out behind him. Behind the heavy foot, the lead foot. Okay. And then I go okay. Forward. And you go forward. Yep. That's the joy of winning. Yes. I'll go with the skirmisher versus the heavy foot. I'm gonna be a zero because I'm double overlapped. And I'm a five. I'm a four to your seven. I just f fall back. Didn't quite work out for you there. Okay. So now we have a lot of light troop skirmish action on the end. Where do you want to start? Um, his his heavy foot's going to be minus two here. So they would have normally been a four. They're going to be a, a two plus one for the hill three. Yep. So let's go there. I'm going to be a two to his three. Two to three. Ah. Uh oh. So I'm a three to six. Okay. So that means I have to evade. Yep. But he'll come forward. So doubled heavy foot on the end, charging forward in victory. Yep. And the other skirmisher. Yeah, we'll do the other skirmisher next. So I'm going to be down to a zero, and you'll be a five. So I'm a five. Your seven. I just fall back. All right. All right. Rebel. Let's do the. Um, let's see. This He's guy's overlap. This one is not. So we'll do the three to two here. I guess. Okay. Three Larry's, to two. Larry's three to my two. Yep. Because of the hill. Uh, I'm a three to his four. So back him up. No doubling. And now you're going to be a zero. Two, Larry's three. Uh oh. Five to one. Five to one. Doubled. The skirmisher kill. The skirmisher can kill the rabble. Okay. And he comes forward. All right. All right, so we've got our first death. The hapless no, rabble. No, the four no, my first one was over here. Oh, I'm sorry. First death on the Norman side. And we have a first death on the Saxon side. So skirmishers and rabble are taking it hard in the woods. Doing all the heavy lifting for the okay. for the lords. So, Larry, fine. you probably want to roll command pips this time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have one, but we have six in the middle five. and a five. All right, so the Saxons have the ability to put their line back together, although on the flank in the woods they might have a little bit of concern with like one command pip. It's all fun and games until those rabble come screaming out of the woods. <laughs> Everybody fears the rabble charge from the woods. They'll probably bypass your main line and head for the camp so they can sack it. They want to meet this Harold guy everybody 
keeps talking about. Mm -hmm. So what do we do with this mess? Now your skirmishers do not require the extra command pip to, to move back up the hill. Only your heavy and your elite foot. So only the only the close order foot have that issue. And the horde, of course. If the horde actually start charging down the hill, though, I think it's going to be a bad day for the Normans. Yeah. Oh, I definitely think I want to come back. Okay. So that's two. And you said that's one. That's only one, yep. So you still got, uh, still got two. two command pips left there. If there's anything you want to do. I'll bring him over. Okay. Uh-oh, you're already calling out the reserves, Brian. Looks like you've won. <laughs> a good sign. Yeah, we'll bring him over. They're done. Okay. I used two of these because I brought him back yep. in. Yep, so it's a four. I don't think I want to do anything else there. What do I want to do here? Could unleash the horde. I'm going to bring one here. So on this end of the field, probably using some of those reserves towards the skirmish line. Like I said, it's all fun and games until those rabble come screaming out of the woods in your rear. Mm -hmm. Nothing worse than rabble in the rear. <laughs> I can edit that part out later. <laughs> Leave it. Now, in the fantasy version, some of these could be tree ants. It's funny because the early stages of this battle always end up being this dance on the skirmish and the, and the ends, mm -hmm. but it always gets decided. <laughs> Right down oh, yeah. in the bloody middle, so. Yeah. Um, there's Eustace, looking ever so dashing with his giant mustache. Okay, so we did, we are, we are moving over there. We, those rabble got you shaking, don't they? Okay, so. It is, once again, nope. Norman's command points. Five. Oh, He's just keeping good. up that heavy, heavy, heavy command roll. Five. Five. And three. And three. Okay, so Bishop Bodo got a little closer and then decided points. maybe it's not such a good idea. All right. Points. All right. Let's see what we can do up here. I'm going to zoom in on the action here. So, I think Larry's skirmisher's got you right where he wants you. He is going to Oops. You're bypassing that guy like he's not even important? Well that's one. <laughs> Here's two. Three. Okay. Um let's see. Two more command pips. Gonna bring the skirmisher through the line. He does have the ability to reach the line with his movement. So I can't remember, Larry, that's four. girth on that side, right? Yes. Yeah, so girth, one of the king's brothers. That was another tragedy in this battle at the end, um, was that not only not only were all the claimants to the throne wiped out, but like the entire Saxon nobility, anybody that might have had a claim in England was was killed because they all died here at this battle. I'm going to move the... Um, Harold was actually upset that Girth showed up. He was supposed to stay in London in case he died. Move the uh, the knights and the Jav Cav up to support. Okay. So that they can be within striking distance. Looks like a great plan right up until the dice are rolled. Yeah, that's right. Everybody has a plan until they get hit. Okay. Um, let's see. This shot's going to be important because the other camera's just looking at the back of your head, Brian. Oh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see there. Nothing to see. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. So, for one, I'm going to bring these skirmishers up. We could argue that you're wearing the Saxon hairstyle, except for the whole part about the front. <laughs> yeah. You got the, the shaved back is just right, just right for this battle. Two. 
Now, heavy foot cannot kill jav calf, correct? Heavy foot cannot. So the heavy foot, it's the same effect as the skirmisher. So the jav calf can dance away from the heavy foot. However, jav calf, unlike the skirmishers, do get close enough to throw something at the enemy. The difference is they're fast enough to dance away from the unskilled, lesser skilled heavy foot. But the elite foot, the guys with the big battle axes, they've seen this crap before and they know when to throw their axe or their javelin right back at them. So they can kill, the elite foot can kill the javelin cavalry. So my question is, if mm -hmm. I were to take my jav cav into here to fight the heavy foot mm -hmm. and was to lose or even be doubled... They would evade. They would evade. So yes. it's still a, a, a still recoil, a fallback, right. and then four... These guys, if they double them, they kill them. Gotcha. So the skirmishers have immunity to everything that Larry's got in the front line, except for the other skirmishers. Um, the jav cav are immune to everything except the elite foot and the skirmishers. So, okay. Well, I will take him in. Very third so, command. I still got two points left. I'm going to bring these guys up closer. It's about to get ugly. It, it is, is about to get ugly. It is about to get ugly, yes. Well, and this is an interesting one, because because we did the historical deployment, um, and we didn't put the horses in between the skirmishers and the heavy line, Brian's trying a little bit different approach than we've seen in past convention games, where he's bringing the infantry in first. So we'll see how, how this works out. Just out of range. Yeah. Now, that one, the Javcav... Would have the added benefit of being fighting in the uh, rough terrain, the combat, so they have a combat penalty. Correct. Which is okay because they actually want to lose and pull the guy out of the line. I assume that's what you're, you're going for the evade. They can still evade from those guys, but the skirmishers can kill them. Okay. Let's do this. Let's get this guy slid a little. He should be. He should be within line. Mm -hmm. five of that line. Yep. So I'm going to move. Oh, yeah, he moves five. Yeah, he, should, he might have slid down the hill a little bit. So that skirmisher going in to engage. Two. I'm going to move him up to help protect that skirmisher's flank. So I'm going to move him up here. But not into combat. Not into combat. Okay. Actually, we'll join him up with the rabble there. Yeah. So I find a rabble jav cav... Oh, oh yeah. formation is usually useful. The JFK feel much more comfortable with rabble on their flank. Uh -huh. That's what I found in my studies. <laughs> Move these guys up here. All right, here come the heavy foot. And with my last command point, I'm going to bring the knights. Okay. And get them to where they're lined up again in case uh, recoiling becomes an issue. We don't want to have anybody getting caught in a bad spot. Okay. So that is it for my command points. We do have some combats over here. All right. Let's move in on the combat. We'll start with that skirmisher on the end again. All right. So Larry's going to be a two up to a three because of the uphill advantage, but back down to a two. And I'm going to be a one because I'm overlapped. Yep. Oh, that's not good. Two. So he's five. five. So he doubled me and killed me. Mm-hmm. And the rabble bounces in the woods. And the skirmisher charges your heavy foot. Oh, Look at that. Might have to move that fluff out of the way. <laughs> there we go. Okay. They don't go too far forward. All right, we'll do the skirmisher on the general there. It's a whole lot to... Seven to zero. Seven to zero. Well, I'm pretty one. sure he doubled them, yeah. and maybe even tripled them. Zero. All right, so... We ought to have a rule. If you triple, they die. No. No. <laughs> all right. Um, so he's he gonna... wants the tripling, the doubling, all that good stuff. Four. Yes, I know he does. So he's going to end up back here i got to make sure he's actually got enough space to land there and not end up popping out behind the... Well, he can stop landing. in front of the horses because oh. evade, evade's a fairly casual uh, pullback. Um, so if you get in a situation where you can't quite complete an evade, he'll just stop. Okay. So he wouldn't have enough movement to get all the way to here. He would just stop. I'd, I'd rather have him have to go all the way through. 
Yeah, I understand that. Okay. He has been rather annoying. Hasn't just, he? As, just as long as you understand that that's what I would like to have. Okay. Then we'll go here. When we, when we write the next set of rules, Larry, we'll put that in just okay. for you. I'm a zero to your six. Jeez, three ones in a row. Wow. But that's when you want them. So he's going to evade. Yeah, so his recoil is going to pop him there. He's going to end up back here somewhere. Yep. He could stop in front of the horse. Or he could pop all the way through or be to the side of the horse. If, he's got, it's enough, if he's got the room, he's got, it looks like he does. Yep. Yeah. So picking back up in the center here. Okay, so back in the center. We had an evade and pulled the house carl out. And now we're at the jav cab skirmisher point. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so skirmisher's a one. First, the um, heavy foot will be a five. Right? All right, so yeah. we're down on the skirmisher versus jav cab. I'm a four. Oh, we're Jav Calf? No. Oh, sorry. Skirmishers versus yeah. heavy, heavy foot. Yep. Four to nine. So he did double. So he's going to pop out behind. And then he'll fall back. And he's going to have to go back a little ways. He will evade. And now the Jav Calf is going to be overlapped twice. So they started a three. They're going to be a one versus foot. And Larry, you started a three plus one for the hill. Yep. It'll be a four. Ooh, I'm a two. Two. Five. To a five. So you double them. And they'll also evade only four. But that is starting to make it a little bit harder to put the line back together for the Saxon. So the Saxon line's getting a little bit disjointed. Okay. Another skirmisher? Uh, we'll go the skirmisher on the right there. Yep. So I'm going to okay. be a... Um, a one, and I'll be a five. So I'm a five. Eight or eight. It's the recoil, which he doesn't quite have enough, so he's got to pop behind. Yeah, he'll pop behind. He can pass through. Now I'm a zero to your two, well, three. Yeah, right? well, you're going to start at a two. You're down two because of the woods. A little bit of woods in front mm -hmm. of the combat, so and up one for the hill. So, so three, three to two, three, three, three to zero. zero. Five to okay. seven. Five to seven. So, Once and you'll end up next to his buddy. Yep. But you didn't double, they don't pull him forward. Nope. It's and that's it for our combat for the Norman's turn. Yep. All right. King Harold. So, what do you think, Larry? All right. Girth, five. Harold. King, two. I think minus, that's six. Minus uh -huh. one. Minus two. Hey, uh, <laughs> Four. Four. Um, and you needed a little bit more in the center there, didn't you? I did. I think I'll use those two to bring him back. Okay. So he's done. All right. Uh, I think two to bring back that. Yeah. He's down to a three. Still have rabble in the woods, but he's down a skirmisher, so that certainly helps the situation. So he can come back just for one. He is in zone of control, point, right? He's in zone of control, though. So uh, he's he can still, only go two. He can right? only move two, or he can turn and face the guy that has got him in zone of control. Mm -hmm. So I want to do that, right? You can do that. And you probably want to do it such that you have at least one fall back. Which I've got. There. Yeah. So that at least zones of control, puts that guy in zone of control, so they're facing off. Mm -hmm. And they're pretty much an even fight. The only thing you got to worry about is if Brian brings up heavy foot. So. Yeah. He's already moving the farmer reserves. So I can probably do something like that, correct? Yep. So at least you're prepared for the rampaging rabble charge. The rabble onslaught. Yep. So okay. far as moving corner, move three, yep. lines him up in the rear. And you're turning that so flank. That's one, two, right? No, and three, three four. four. And I got so one. You should have one, one left. One left yeah. Anything else you want to do? Hmm. 
You want to use that special chop down a tree and build palisade maneuver? Double check that fallback. You're good. I'm good. Okay. And that's mm -hmm. it on this end that's as it. well, or do you want to move anything on this end? I got four here. Well, no, I think I want to, because these guys, ooh, that's green. That's green, correct. Do I want to leave him out there all by himself? Well, this is where the Saxon uh, commander starts to have some decisions. You could also bring both lines forward mm -hmm. um, or leave them out there together so at least it's not one of them getting double overlapped. But, I, no, Brian's got stuff now that's in a place to take advantage of a double overlap. So the, the, the Normans could start to take advantage of that. However, he's leading with his heavy and his elite foot. You still have the uphill advantage. He doesn't have the shatter that the knights do until he brings the knights into place. So this is where the Saxon commander in this battle has to start making some decisions. Can he control his unruly troops that think they're winning and pull them back into line, or does he unleash the hounds? I'm going to keep them right where they're at. Okay. Okay, we're good. All right, that Norman's turn. No combats. Okay. No more combat. Oh, two. Two for Eustace. One. One oh, for William. Stalling out. Six, six for Odo. Well, this is where Odo dies. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely. All right, so for two. Tragic. Um. So for. With my two command points, he could attack, and this guy does have the movement to spin around and be on the corner. And be well to close the. Oh yeah, he does. So just he, because he's already basically touching the, the, the stand, it's just yeah. enough. So he's there. And you'll have to do it short-sighted. Yep. Yeah, something like, like that. that. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's my two for here. Let's try to get rid of that skirmisher. And Larry's heavy foot that he brought over is not close enough to stop that because he's not projecting his own control that far into the woods. Now, one here did not help. Um, yeah, you're going to spend some time reforming for the next move, huh? <laughs> one command pip in the center doesn't let you do a lot of maneuvering. Two, two would have been great. We'll come back to that in just a minute here. Okay. Um... has the movement to get there. Well, um, I'm going to do this for one. Bring these guys forward. Okay. So that's one there. Take him up to here. Okay, so jab, cav, moving up. Leading heavy foot on the hill. Three. Oh, you're trying to win. Four. I'm going to leave the rest as is for now. So mm -hmm. I would have two left there if I want to do anything. And then with one here. I'm going to bring up these two guys here. Okay. And that's it. All right. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do anything else here. Okay. That's it. So, where would you like to start? We'll start in the usual. Yeah, we'll just continue the, the normal path here. So, um, uh, should be a two my, to one, my right? two to your one. Yep. Yeah, there's no hill There's advantage here. Yeah. They lock. Four to four. Which is not good lock. with that heavy foot. Coming that way. Okay. Uh, coming down here. Back in the center. Let's look here first. We would be... Um, four down to three, back up to a four. So that would be four to four there. Four to four. Here would be... 
he would start at a three, go to a four for uphill, because three versus three. mounted, mm -hmm. and then he'd go back to a three for the overlap, and you'd be a three. So it's three to three versus four to four. However, he can't die if he loses. Okay, so let's um, let's start here. Okay. And Brian, Beautiful. the reason you're doing that is because if, for example, he loses and you get a double overlap, he's still not at risk. Yeah, I don't, I don't want him to it. back out and be overlapped. I'm explaining that for the crowd. Yep. So four to four. So nine to eight. I so back him up. Put him back in line. Okay, uh, so now him. that heavy foot starts at a three for mounted, mm -hmm. plus one uphill is a four, but he's double overlap, so he's a two, two. and the jav cav is a three. So it's three to two. So we have a six plus three is nine, nine to five. To five. You did not quite double him, which is what you would have needed, but you did pack him back in the that, line that for nice Larry. That was yeah. nice, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> Larry thanks you for that. Yeah, so I'll go here next. I'm gonna be a one to your five. Yes. Four to a lot a lot. A lock. A whole lot. And he's gonna back here all right and then i'm gonna be a zero i'm a four up to a five down by two so i'm a three three to zero mm -hmm. eight to five i just recoil which brings him back here okay and well, it's going to be king harold's turn we'll take a not pause like i hoped so he's a four against go into the bag going he'll be a two he's a two down to a one correct if correct. i hit him on correct now if i hit him what does that do for this you decide the order of the combat so if yep. you peel him off first mm -hmm. then that frees up that skirmisher to not die if he loses and that's the key thing about in triumph so when you hit the flank mm -hmm. but it's your turn yep you get to decide the order. So if mm -hmm. you do this combat first and win, it peels them off of this guy. So that's a very important uh, aspect. And if it was a Brian's turn, of course, he's going to do it in the order yep. that's most sure. favorable to him. Yep. So if you get in there and lock, uh, you still could end up losing the skirmisher. Brian pressed his skirmisher's luck. We think one it was a bridge too far. One, oh, yeah. one, one turn too many last time, and he lost him, so... And in this battle, they're amazingly important for those woods. I'm just going to do this. All right. And does he have a fallback? It looks like yeah, he, he does. does. That's good. Okay. So, that's your one. Yep. All right. We have six in the middle where you need absolutely nothing except, well, unless you want to bring out the horde. No, I think I'm good there. Yeah. Not time to unleash the horde. And you have one here. Could advance the entire line. Always an option. Not necessarily a good one, but it's always an option. Well, I definitely don't want to get my guys out of the bag going here mm -hmm. with them coming. So I think I'm just going to leave everything the way it is there. And okay. we'll go to the fighting down here. All right. So we're going down to the other flank. So we'll do here first. All right. Heavy the... foot on Rabble, but you're fighting in the woods. Uh, Rabble have no penalty in the woods, but they are hitting the flank. So the Rabble would start at a 2, go to a 1. And your uh, heavy foot would start at four and go to a two. Mm -hmm. Two to one. And they lock. And, and they lock. locked. Which is what we were just talking about. All right. So, so we'll now the with... skirmisher. So he'll it's a be two to one, right? Two to one. Skirmisher's down to a one, yep. We have a five, which goes to a seven. And six. a six for the skirmisher. The skirmisher is killed. But it's not a double. The rabble stays there. Okay, rabble in the woods, always a danger. All right, that is, yep. And that's it for the combat. So it'll be back to King, uh, no, sorry, premature, Duke William. 
One. <laughs> <laughs> We're hoping, Kenny. Four. Well, he's got a choice. He four. He can lose and be known as the bastard who didn't make it through England, or he can win and become the conqueror. So, uh, the lower the numbers, the better chance something's going to die. Mm -hmm. Because it becomes the die roll that has a bigger impact. So move him forward okay. for my one command point. That's yep. it. And of course, you're risking a two-point stand, and he's he's fighting with a three-point stand. Yes. So that's it for the right side. In the middle. Uh, let's see. Four for William. Let's actually work on this flank side here with... Okay. Bishop so we're Odo. coming down to... The left flank of the Normans, and it's time for Bishop Odo to do something. All right, so he is going to go forward for one. Okay. Actually, by doing that, I'm hurting myself. If I go up and hit him... He has to conform. He has to conform that way, correct? Yes. To the most... He has to conform the shortest distance if the group hits a single stand. As long as you leave him a fallback. And if he's lined up with the other line, he'll have a fallback. Which I won't be. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, you, you'll be, be, you'll be yeah, parallel, I'll be so you'll be okay. okay. Right. You'll be okay. If the knights were doing it, it's not a big deal because they shatter him. They don't have to leave right. a fallback. Which is extremely annoying for Harold's line. Okay. Um... Well, I think I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to go in there for one, mm -hmm. there for two, there for three. Well, you could have brought those forward with one and slid over. The two that the two that you moved into contact with him, that could have been one command point. But you're not allowed to um, oblique. No, when you move in, you are allowed to oblique to line up. So if you choose to align with him... So if you choose to have these guys line up with him, mm -hmm. this group could move forward and slide over. That is allowed oh, okay. to line up for combat. It's the only time that you can oblique, but you had to have enough movement to complete your actual final position. So to, en to end up where you ended up, which you did. Okay. So that leaves me two. Mm-hmm. Three. Ooh, the skirmish column. And he is part of this command here. Yep. So I'll take him up for four. That's my last command point. Okay. So four command points. Okay. Well, he side. did get a jab cap mixed in with William's command, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um... <coughs> Here we'll go for one. Bring him up here for two. I'm gonna get a little crazy on this end. Three. What are we doing? Four. Okay, so I'm pushing the line in. That's it. Okay. All right. So we're good there. Oh, just got to position him. Okay. So <laughs> uh, Williams decided to get his uh, heavy foot out of the way, one way or another. Yeah, we've got more. <laughs> that reserves, do you? <laughs> All right. So where would you like to start? We'll start over here. In the woods with the rabble. I'm going to switch back to Duke William just in case this doesn't work out so well. <laughs> All right, so Duke William is going to start on his right flank. So oh, seven to six. <laughs> seven to six. So he will turn in place, lining up with his brother rabble, and he will, since he has room to deploy, no problem. And now he will back up, fall back one stand or base depth. Yep. And you just helped him reorient, and he's in a position to attack you, Larry. You need to double him, kill him. Kill those rabble. I couldn't do a whole lot. I know. <laughs> rabble or killers? So, rabble are the bow levy, are the poor man's bow levy. Yes. Yeah, bow levy are the poor man's archers, and rabble are the poor man's bow levy. 
All right, so here I'm going to do something a little different. We've got elite foot in the center here. Yes, you do. And then we've got heavy foot, skirmisher, and a um, jav calf. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to start with the elite foot here. Okay. So you have elite on heavy here. So that's so going to be a five, five, five for the elite and a four plus one for the hill for the heavy. So five to five. Okay, so we got a nine to an eleven. To an eleven, so back up. So this is gonna be a whole lot of pushing and shoving. No doubling. Okay. Now the guys they're faced off against are the house carls with the axes. So they're gonna be elite foot uphill is a six, and you're gonna be elite foot overlapped four. To a four, unless you want to switch. Um no, we'll keep that. These are heavies. Yep. Okay. We'll keep that though. All right. So we got a six, six to, four. to a four. Okay, 10. 8 to 11. Yeah. Hard to double those with those kind of numbers. All right, so now the guys across me are heavy foot, so you're back to a 4 plus 1 is 5, and your elite foot are 5 down to a 4 for the overlap. Oh, 10 to uh, 9, correct? Yeah. Okay, so you're going to push that whole mess behind you back. Because essentially it's close order foot pushing back close order foot, but there aren't so many that you can't push them back. Um, and then we have over here the elites would have been a six, they're down by one for the overlap, so five to one to one for the scratchers. Six to nine to nine. Okay, interesting. Then we've still got to go this way. Those so. heavies, they would start out at a four, overlap to a three. Yep. And Larry, you four are? Or a five. five. Okay, five. Seven to ten. to ten. So fall back, right in line. So as you can see, pushing the shield wall up, even with the elite foot in the shield in the uh, the dismounted night line there, with that hill advantage, they're probably just gonna pound on the door and not get through. Yep. Yep. Jav cab double overlapped, goes to a one, to a five, and you're going to be a th three, oh, three, to four. three up to a four because it's mounted. Yeah, you're not as good fighting mounted. Nope. So four, four one. one. So I'm a four to his eight. So double to evade. So pull back a base step, drop back four. Could end up right next to those guys or in front of them. Yep. It's going to end up like yeah, there. just slightly off. Yep. Okay. Okay. And they came forward because they doubled. Yep. All right. Here, we'll start there. So that's okay. heavy versus heavy. Right. So they would normally be fours. Your guys are four. There he's got the uphill, so he's a five back down to a four because of the overlaps. Oh, Double overlap. Three. He's actually okay. back to a three. So you're a four to his three. Okay. Nine. Nine. Five. five. Did not double him. Almost double him, but Almost. you did put him back in formation. Yeah, just what I didn't want. All right, so my skirmisher is then going to be a zero because he's double overlapped. Larry will be a two, three, because... Um, oh, the woods. Yep. Yeah, uphill, also in the, the woods, so three. Or three, yep. Yep. So I'm a two to six. Yep, that's going to evade him away. He's going to recoil, fall back. Okay. All right. So at this point, we're part way through the battle, um, and as you can see, uh, the Norman uh, center has engaged with their infantry, um, trying to use the skirmishers to pull the guys out. Cavalry ready to take advantage of any holes that are created. Um, similar thing on the Norman left. On the right side of the battlefield, we have the rabble which have won the battle in the woods, but now to come out of the woods they have to face the heavy foot, um, but the flank is starting to turn over here. So that's where we're at so far as we uh, get to the next phase of the battle.